for the day. It is not the strongest or the most intelligent who will survive, but those who can best manage change. In this quote, we learn a valuable lesson on how to survive in the world. The greatest scientist of his time, Charles Darwin, is saying that the main thing in life to survive is not power or intelligence, but how we can manage change for our advantage. With this thought, let us recall what we have studied earlier. Earlier, we have gone through the nutrition in plants. It is of three types. Autotrophic, heterotrophic, symbiotic. Autotrophic, the plant can prepare its own food on its own. Heterotrophic, the plant is somewhat dependent on the others. For example, insectivorous plants and saprophytic plants. The third nutrition is symbiotic nutrition, wherein both, for example, fungi and algae, as in case of lichen, they both derive nutrition from each other. They both support each other. So, both of them, they grow together. So, it is symbiotic. Now, let's move further with nutrition in animals. Let's recall. Which are the various nutrients in food? And for what purpose are the nutrients used? If you remember, earlier you have studied what nutrients are required. Carbohydrate, proteins, vitamins, minerals, fibers. And for what purpose the nutrients are used? They are used for, we have discussed this, for growth, wear and tear of the body, right? So, when the nutrition in animal comes in picture, you have to consider certain factors. The three basic factors are the need for nutrients. What is the need of nutrients for animal? Mode of ingesting the food and its use in the body. So, Nutrients necessary for various activity of the body, they are obtained from food. They are supplied to various parts of the body through blood. But does blood get the nutrients directly from food? No. It, the food that we consume does not mix with the blood as it is. It needs to be converted into soluble forms that can easily mix in blood. And so, there are various steps in nutrition so far as animals are concerned. And those steps start from ingestion and end till ingestion. So, let us consider the steps in nutrition in animals. Ingestion is taking in the food into the body. Digestion, conversion of food into simple soluble forms. Why into simple? So that it goes into blood. Absorption, transfer of soluble food to the blood. Assimilation, utilization of the absorbed food by cells and tissues for energy production, growth and repair. And finally, ejection is removal of waste products and undigested food from the body. So these are the steps of nutrition in animals. Observe the animals around you and complete the following table. Name of animal, type or name of food and method of ingestion. This one is an easier one. Try completing the table on your own. Next is types of nutrition animals. The type A is holozoic nutrition. Can you tell how does the ingestion occur in unicellular animals like amoeba? Think about it. See children, amoeba is unicellular. That means a single cellular animal which has just single cell. And what is a single cell? A single cell will have single nucleus That's and its own machinery. That's it. It does not have organs like hands and mouth. 
सो इट कैन टेक इन फूड थ्रू एनी पार्ट ऑफ द सर्फेस ऑफ इट्स यूनिसेलर बॉडी ओके सो इट डज नॉट हैव अ माउथ अमीबा डज नॉट हैव अ माउथ फॉर इंजेक्शन नाउ लेट एस सी देन हाउ डज इट डू इट अमीबा सराउंड्स द फूड पार्टिकल फ्रॉम ऑल द साइड्स टू टेक इट इन टू द सेल एज यू कैन सी हियर After that, what it does it it digests the food with the help of different enzymes. An undigested food is left behind as the amoeba moves further with the help of pseudopodia. In unicellular animals like amoeba, euglena, paramecium, etc., all the steps of nutrition occur within their unicellular body. and such nutrition is called as holozoic nutrition observe and discuss how will you classify the following animals according to their food type as you can see here a deer is shown it is grass eating what about the lion it is dependent on deer vulture it survives on dead and decaying organic matter you can see a chameleon it survives on insects a wolf it is omnivorous it can eat both dead and decaying organic matter or even maybe plant material a parrot it can eat fruits it can eat insects both humans they also can survive both on plants and animals and take up their nutrition according to the type of food animals can be classified as first one herbivores as the name suggest they use plants directly as their food the example are grazing animals granivores okay do granivores means those that eat seeds seed eaters and the other is frugivores that means the fruit eaters 